Hey everyone, and welcome to the tutorial series for the procedural city generator. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to use the subway system. It's going to be a fairly short video. We'll take a look at how to spawn the subway stations, and then finally how to configure the subway stations to create this complete subway system. So if I go ahead and jump into Unreal, I've already went ahead and created a simple city here with some uh, subways and you can recreate this setup simply create your city and choose the zone simple buildings and if I open the zone blueprint here you'll see that going under building details the last uh, actor under index 6 is going to be the subway station so notice that I'm not using my default building blueprint this is a completely separate blueprint BP underscore subway station and that's because I have certain blue utilities there um, to make it function the way it should. So obviously you can come here and change the bounds and the street buffer and all that good stuff. Uh, I do want to call out that I am using some, some settings that we haven't looked before. I am using a percent chance to spawn of 25%. That means that I don't want the subway system to spawn very often. I want it to be sparse. And I also want it to spawn by checking a minimum distance. And the minimum distance is 30,000 uh, units. And what this is doing is, if I go back to the level, by the way, these little balls here, these are the subway stations. I purposely added these markers, these giant balls. So when you are looking at your city from above, like I am now, it is very easy to select and look at different subway stations. But if you just look at the, at, the, at the subway station distribution here, you see that we have a lot more buildings, but the subways are fairly sparse and they're spaced between each other. And the way that I, that I made this happen fully procedurally was by choosing the option of check min distance. Basically, every time there's a new subway station that wants to spawn, it does a sphere trace with a radius of, in this case, 30,000 units and will only spawn if no other um, of the same building type appear. So this is a very good way of configuring your buildings if you want a certain building to be uh, sparse or basically have certain distance. For example, the police station would be a great example of that or the subway station. Nonetheless, uh, now that we have our city generated and we have our subway stations, if you select any of the subway stations, and I already have a, a a subway station here selected with a key, you'll see that it's a very simple mesh. It has the text in front. It's basically supposed to be this, the, the, the name. And it's basically a mesh, if I go to game mode, that if you go inside, it basically is just like a dead end there. And the whole idea is that when the player goes in, he'll be presented with a menu, he can choose to go to another subway station and then he'll be teleported to that location. Ideally, obviously, you would want an underground uh, subway station and all that, but for now, the functionality is what's important. So, you'll notice that when I select the subway station, I have a few things. City name, this is automatically added. I would not touch that. Then you have the station name, uh, and then you have the subway line. These two are quite important. So, if I grab this guy and say, I want this uh, station name to be, I don't know, let's say station one not a very creative name you can see that automatically the name changes here you can also choose to um, change the material of the station to anything you want and change the color of the text so instead of red you can make it purple or blue or whatever and the idea here is that instead of, of trying to figure out how to connect the stations you would then go out of game mode and you will look at your entire city like this and you will do this in a logical manner. So if we were to think about this, we could say, hey, how about this subway station, this subway station, this one and this one? All of these four are perhaps part of a line of subway stations. And maybe these ones here are another one and these ones. You can divide them any way you want. But the idea would be that you would select a bulk of stations, then you would come here. Obviously, the station name would be different. So let's just get let's just choose this four real quick. This is gonna be station one. Actually, you know what? Let's make this station two. 
this is going to be station one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to select station one, two, three, and four, and we're going to give it a subway line. So by default, it comes and says default line, but you want to change this to something else. Let's call it the blue line. Why not? And now that we have everything selected, let's make sure that we change the subway material to something else. Uh, subway blue. And you can see that the, the material changes. And again, this is made in, that, in such a way so it's easy for us to see. So if I go back down to the station, now you see that the material for the stations is going to be blue. So it's going to look like blue. And the title is going to stay red. And now, with all these four stations selected for the same line, I'm going to come down here and click on Get Station List. And what this is doing is it's scanning the entire map for other stations with the same subway line effectively connecting these stations. So if I click on station one and I look at uh, the station map, you'll notice that we have station two. Well, this, this is the actual name here, but it will be station two, three, and four. So now if I go all the way down here and I spawn in this location, let's see what happens. I would come to station two and as soon as I move in, my character is stopped and a menu appears with a drop down for all of the different stations here that are part of the same line. Notice that we are in station two, so obviously station two doesn't appear, so station two would be one, three, and four. So if I select station one, go to station, I'm immediately teleported to station one and I'm in another part of the city. And if I go back, now we should see two, three, and four. Two, four, and three. There you go. And we just keep teleporting around in the city. So it's very simple. Uh, and again, let's just do the same exercise. Let's grab these guys here and make a red line. Uh, let's make this for a red line. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit quicker here because it's the same setup. But there is a reason why I wanted to do it this way. This is going to be station five, station six, station seven, and station eight. So one, two, three, and four. These are all red lines, multiple names. We're going to change the material to red. So this is the red line. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get the station map. And they all have those stations there. Great. And we're not going to worry about these, but it's going to be the exact same process. And why not? We're going to grab the text and we're going to make it white. Click on save. And now we have two different lines of uh, subway stations. So if you get into the blue line, you'll only be able to access the blue line. But if you go into the red line here, let's click on play real quick, we should only now have access to the red line. And this is station five, and you can see that the configuration has changed. And now you can see that we only have access to those stations. Very, very simple. One more thing that I want to show. It is that you can actually connect different lines. So sometimes um, some lines may connect at a specific station with other lines. So let's assume in this example that this line, this station, which is station four, is going to connect to the station five here. So what I would do is I would select this station only and I would come down into line connections and I would add red line. And this has to be spelled exactly the same as the subway line of whatever stations you want to add. And then if I grab 
this guy and do the exact opposite and say, hey, but this guy's going to connect to the blue line. Now, if I come all the way down here and I click on play, now I should see not only all of the red lines, but all of the blue lines. Whoops. One more thing we forgot, sorry about that, is we need to update the station list. And now you see that we have all of the different stations. So my, my mistake there, once you change the settings here for the lines, you need to get station list. And now you see that we have more stations here. So one more try here. Where is the station here? Whoops. All right, so this is station four. I go in. And now you see that we have all of the stations in the red and the blue line. So that's how you connect. But if I go to one of these other stations, like station two, which did not have the connection, I'm sure you guess what's going to happen. Obviously, you only have the blue line connection here. So that's the basic idea. Uh, one other option you can do, which I found to be useful, is um, actually in this one that has the connection, you can select the option of add line to name. And we're going to do the same thing with this one that does have the connection, add line to name. And what this is going to do is that if I come down now to the station here, when I go into the station, you'll see what happens to the name. It's going to add the line in the front of the name to make it a lot easier to figure out which line or which station is in which line, as you can see here. So now we know that station five and eight are in the red line, but station two and one are in the blue line. By the way, um, maybe in the future I can arrange these by uh, maybe alphabetically or something. Right now, it's just whichever way appears on the array, but it still gets the job done. So if you're confused, normally you wouldn't have station five, you'll have actual names of, of stations, uh, and you want to have the, the line, then you just select that option. And you can see here that we can go to station six, red line station six, and here we are, red line station six. And this one doesn't have it because again, we didn't choose the option for the line to appear. There you go, and here we go again. All right, that is pretty much it guys. Uh, again, notice these balls uh, is again, to make it easier for you guys to plan your lines from a top-down view. That was basically the whole point. This doesn't have any collision and should be invisible as soon as you go into play mode. This is just as a helper. Uh, but hopefully this, uh, this video helped you understand how to set up your subways. If you open the showcase level that comes with PCG, the subways are already set up and I believe I actually have better names than just Station 5. <laughs> I have actual names. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. I'm not going to cover the city section. This is going to be covered later when we do uh, level streaming. There is a way to divide your cities into subsections, and that makes it easier for you to use level streaming for mega cities. That is another tutorial coming down the line, uh, so I'm not going to address it here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or uh, make sure you uh, join our Discord and participate in the community. You can also always DM me via Discord or email me for support questions. Otherwise, uh, I love to hear your feedback and what you think. Guys, thank you so much for uh, your support and for watching the video, and I'll talk to you next time.